In this section, we're going to talk about an introduction to rational functions. A rational function is a function that is represented as a fraction, where at the top of the fraction we have a function, and at the bottom of the fraction we also have a function. One of the rules for functions is that whatever number we put into the function also has to give us a real number out of the function. And recall that what goes into a function for x is what we call the domain, and what comes out of the function for y is what we call the range. So our concern is what is the domain of a rational function? In other words, what can we put into a rational function that will give us a real number in, but also the key is also obtaining a real number out? What happens when we put a 9 in place of x in the given rational function? We're going to replace everywhere we see an x with parentheses. And then we're going to drop a 9 in place of x where the parentheses are. We will simplify the top and the bottom of the fraction. We get 32 divided by 0, which we talked in the previous video is undefined we are not allowed to divide by zero. Undefined is not a real number. So what we're saying here is that if I put a nine into the function in place of x, the y value that I get out is undefined. But we cannot plot this on a piece of graph paper. Nine comma undefined for my y value cannot be plotted. What this tells me is that the number 9, in this case, would cause the denominator to be 0, and therefore does not give me a real number out as output. What, that, what we're going to say is that 9 is not included as part of the domain. The domain are the x values that are allowed to go into the function, those, real, those x values are real numbers, but the restriction is that I must also get a real number out as a result of putting that x value in. So we would say that x equals 9 is not in the domain of that rational function. It is not one of the x values that is allowed to go in as input. Our goal, our first goal for rational functions is to determine what is the domain or what x values are allowed to go in that give us a real number out. So find the domain of the following rational functions. We want to give our answer in interval notation. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the denominator and we're going to set the denominator equal to zero. We are going to solve for x. And we are going to exclude those x values from the number line. So our denominator here for this rational function is 6 minus x. So we're going to take that denominator and we're going to set it equal to 0. Our second step then is to solve for x. So I'm going to add x to both sides of that equation to get x by itself. I get 6 equals x. Step 3, I'm going to draw a number line, and I'm going to put 6 on that number line, and we're going to exclude the x value of 6 from the domain. So I'm going to put an open circle. Remember that an open circle means not included. And we're going to highlight everything that is not 6 on the number line. So our domain is going to be all of the x values that go into the function that do not cause division by 0. So our domain is going to be everything that we've highlighted. So every x value except for 6. So we have from negative infinity all the way to 6, but we're not going to include 6. And we have a gap, so we're going to skip over 6. And then I'm going to say we can pick up everything from 6 to positive infinity, but not including 6. 
Anytime we have a jump or a gap in our number line, we're going to put a U. That is what we would call a union symbol. This is what we would call our domain in interval notation. For our second example, we're going to follow exactly the same steps to find the domain. So the domain of our rational function is going to be found by first of all setting the denominator equal to zero. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to solve for x. In this case, we have a quadratic function or a quadratic equation, and we want to solve this by factoring, zpt. So I'm going to set up my two parentheses, and I'm going to factor. We're going to set each one of those factors equal to zero and we're going to solve for x, we get x equals minus 5 and we get x equals positive 7. So we solve for x. Step 3 says we're going to draw a number line and we're going to put those values on the number line. We put them in order just like we would on a number line. Smaller numbers on the left, larger numbers on the right. We're going to exclude those from the domain. We're going to exclude those from the number line by putting open circles and we're going to highlight everything in between, everything to the right, everything to the left of those two numbers. So we're going to highlight the entire number line except for negative 5 and 7. So our domain will be negative infinity all the way to negative 5, but we're not going to include negative 5. We're going to include everything between negative 5 and 7, but neg not negative 5 or 7. And then we're going to include everything to the right of 7, so from 7 to infinity. We have two gaps, so we're going to fill in those gaps with union symbols. So this is the interval notation of the domain of the rational function.